Hey guys, welcome to this video and this week I actually had something else planned but I wanted to work on it some more and refine it and it's like a it's kind of like a pretty serious video so instead of doing that I'm gonna do this and I'll put that off for like a time where we have more time. I still wanted to put out something this week so like I have something to show for I don't know I'm crazy but yeah so this video is kind of just like a mashup of like things I do things I like to do um, I think I think I'm gonna show you like my plants my coffee setup which some people would like probably say like, that's not a real coffee setup but I don't care and my notion setup so yeah let's go so these are my plants oh there's jake hairs everywhere these are my plants i have three i was gonna buy a fourth one but um next time na lang. so this guy is phil i got him as a christmas gift from an exchange trip we had in our block like our college block and he had only like these bottom leaves before these leaves are all new and I'm really happy because the variegation kind of went away for a bit but here he's coming back because we have we have more sun now but yeah that's Phil he's named Phil because he's a philodendron birkin so yeah look at this pretty leaf I'm so sad when it's gonna die you know someday it will and these two are golden pothos plants and I got them from a store on Instagram and it was buy one take one so I was like yeah why not and I was looking for like plants that were easy to take care of for and Golden Pothos was one of them. So I called them the twins because they're like twin Pothos plants and they are growing. They were stunted for a bit and they have nice variegations now and I burned some of the leaves because they got infected with some insects so i was like spraying a lot of neem oil but then the neem oil would burn the leaves sometimes so that's why it has like these burned leaves this guy has a burned edge this one is burnt oh my god my death perception but look at them they're nicely variegated so i'm really happy about that and they're they're forming new leaves like every week here here this guy oh this is a new one this is new. this guy is, has a new one and this one has a new one so yeah those are all my plants i water them i water fill on wednesdays and sundays and then these guys on sundays um i think phil needs more water sometimes he's a tropical plant so yeah so these are my plants, Phil and the twins. Sometimes I just come out here and stare at them. And sometimes it's, and that's weird, but I just like to stare at their leaves sometimes. Okay, so here is my coffee setup. This is my scale, my French press, my grinder, and my milk, and my milk. Okay, so if you see here, this grinder has a little nut so that it doesn't loosen up while I grind, so. What was happening is like I grind it and then by the end of the grind this like tightening thing would be like super loose and the grind wouldn't be consistent. So I put that nut. I saw that on the internet. And put that nut. Okay, so here's my coffee. Uh, I'm not really that particular on what coffee I use. Um so I got this on Instagram at Coffee Buddy and that's where I also got my Press and grinder. It was just like kind of like a set. Okay, so I'm gonna voice over this part because I wasn't really explaining my coffee thingy well. So basically I measure out around 12.3 grams of coffee and I do that because um like the 0.3 would get lost somewhere in the grinder. I don't know where it goes, but yeah, I think I'm gonna show it later. So it ends up being like 12 point whatever. And my brew is like 3 minutes 30, which is like super, super short. But if I do it longer, it kind of gets bitter. I don't know how to fix that 
other than for it to stay like that so i haven't changed it so yeah there's my coffee grinds they're pretty coarse and yeah so three minutes 30 with a 30 second bloom so yeah pretty much four minutes so yeah there like they get stuck at the bottom and they don't come out and i just let it be and there's the coarse grind coffee this is like a dark rose so it's like bitter anyway so there i'm making my timer and i'll do my bloom with 30 seconds i have no idea if this is correct or if it does anything but at least it's still four minutes you know so yeah i wait for it for 30 seconds and then i add the rest of the water which is 170 ml of water and then i let it brew for three minutes 30. And I know that's like weird, like 12 point whatever grams to 170 ml of water. That's so weird. But that's just how it works for me. And I like the taste when I do it like this. I actually did a lot of tests, so this is the best one I got. And then I add 120 ml of almond milk. I don't heat it up anymore. I used to heat it up in my toaster. But yeah, in my toaster. But yeah pretty much if i add the really hot coffee to this it's like the perfect temperature to drink so i don't heat it up anymore so here three minutes 30 done and i push the slowest way possible apparently but yeah slow as i can go and pour it in and it's like the perfect temperature the perfect amount for me at least some people might think this is kind of a weird technique and weird ratio but whatever it keeps me awake in the afternoons and mixy mix and that's it that's my coffee bon appetit slurp so how have you been how has your whole week been i didn't do anything all week except lie down and sleep i wish there was like a sleep bank in my brain like i could sleep all week this holy week and then i wouldn't need sleep the next week because we have a three-day module and then like four weeks of orr anyway that's just a rant so this is what i do right after i actually don't drink my coffee after i do this first so i clean up my coffee my french press and this is what i do i put it in a sieve and run it through water so that the coffee grounds are stuck on the sieve so yeah i do the press first and then i get the french press and swirly swirly swirl it around for a bit and then dump out all of the coffee grounds so that they don't get stuck in the sink and i do it like twice and then i put back the press and plunge it in some water so it doesn't get stinky coffee smell all over it and just keep it like that for a bit until I'm done with my coffee and I can clean everything up. So yeah. And then for the coffee grounds, I like make sure the water's gone. Most of the water's gone at least. And dump it in my food waste trash can. So yeah, that's, that's how I do my coffee thingy. And I do this part so that my French press doesn't smell like coffee. I don't know, like it just feels like it gets like a stinky old coffee smell and I noticed this like a few weeks after I got my french press and I wasn't cleaning it right away and I saw that trick on the internet so yeah a lot of a lot of tricks on the internet with my coffee setup because I am cheap and my setup is cheap and therefore I have to make all these adjustments so yeah back to live cabs mm. so I started drinking coffee again for the first time this like this for the first time this like school year because i keep falling asleep in the afternoons and that's so bad because there's so much to study and the afternoon is just a time to be productive um when we had school i wouldn't drink coffee i just i would just sleep i drink i still prefer i still prefer to just sleep if i'm tired but in the afternoons, it's just like an optional kind of thing to nap. So I'll just drink coffee. I wasn't drinking coffee for a long time because I get like anxiety or panic attacks or I get like tachycardic. But 
um, when I am the one preparing the coffee and I did I made up my like my own recipe, I don't get that kind of reaction. So yeah, I do not drink any other coffee other than the one I make. Okay, so this is my air fryer. It fits like four chicken thighs. That's it. It's really for just two people. I got it. My mom gave me. My mom gave it to me as a Christmas gift. So, yeah. This is the part I hate the most on the air fryer. As you can see. There's a lot of dirt here that I can't remove and I've just accepted that it's going to be like this forever because if I scrub it too hard, the the coating is gonna go away and I don't want to cover it with, like if I'm cooking, I don't want to cover it with aluminum foil all the time because you want the air to flow because that's how the food gets cooked, right? So this is just what it looks like forever with dirt all over it but it's fine we're still alive there's no there hasn't been any bad effects yet maybe i'll make a video about air fryer food but really what i cook in our, our air fryer really the only things i cook in our air fryer is chicken thighs which is just put like some powders that you like on it and then put it in the air fryer and tonkatsu, which is literally just put it in the air fryer. And egg bread, eggs in a basket bread, which so I already stole the idea from somebody else who did it in the air fryer. And then I tried to cook liampo and um, shrimp and... Okay, so I actually went through my Instagram to see what I've cooked. So this is the shrimp with lemon butter, salt and pepper yeah and this is like really one of my it's just shrimp i love shrimp so of course it's one of my favorites uh but the the sino is really the worst to clean and this is another shrimp with my korean quote-unquote paste that i just saw on the internet and i was like okay i'll make that up uh the recipe is here but this sauce can go with anything like pork chicken rice whatever um, this is some banana bread, which is still difficult. I haven't made banana bread since, but I might soon. And I'll show that on my Instagram. So follow me at it's not Cabanels or at Sassy Cabs. Ha! <laughs> Always be plugging. And this is some pork chop. Um, the pork chop kind of went out, uh, ended up being really tough. And I think that's just the pork because it was just low quality pork. And it's the same, just different um, seasoning. But yeah. And then this is the liempo, which ended up a little burnt because I didn't know how long to put it in there. And everything's always a first time to try. So if it comes out burnt, too bad. If it comes out perfect, oh, that's great. The stort ng talong, which I was surprised it tasted actually pretty okay. Um, I just don't want to bust out my pan, honestly, so I put it in this glass thing, which is still the same glass thing I use as with my other, like, meal preps. So yeah, I, I put it in my air fryer too. So here's some sunny side up, but it does come out square, that is the only problem. It comes out square, but it works pretty fine with eggs. I've used it for eggs. I've used the air fryer for eggs a lot, and it's really good. Here's one of our staples, which is chicken thigh, or chicken leg and thigh, and it can fit four. And this is like something we eat almost every week, like twice a week now. And it's just super easy. I just put like salt and pepper, pop it in, and it's done. That that's it. You just have to flip it, and it's it's good. So it's like such an easy dinner, especially for like stressful days. And this is another one which is literally just put it in there, which is pork tonkatsu from CDO. Uh, not sponsored, but just like the easiest thing you can do. It can work for nuggets too, by the way. Like any breaded, pre-made, pre-packaged meat, it's like just pop it in and it's done. And 
yeah so that's like what we eat with some kimchi so that there's like vegetables you know fake vegetables but it's just kimchi warning the next one's oils yeah so the oils from the pork chop yeah, it's kind of gross this is from like two pieces of pork chops so i barely added oil on this just so that it doesn't dry out in the air fryer but most of this oil come came out of the pork chop itself so yeah it's pretty gross some of that is just the seasoning but you, as you can see it's very oily and this is what came out of the tonkatsu um so i don't add oil to the tonkatsu anymore i just put it in there oh that's my phone um so i just put the tonkatsu in there and just let it secrete its own oils and this is around every time this is how much comes out so yeah it's kind of gross if you think about it and this is from the chicken thighs so this is pretty average for the chicken thighs i do add oil to the chicken thighs just so that also they don't dry out and by that i mean like the top and bottom doesn't dry out but the inside it's always pretty juicy every time i use the air fryer but yeah if you think about it if you pan fry this and added more oil that is so much oil and it. it's pretty gross like that's how you used to cook stuff gross so yeah that's what i've been doing with my time this past year i've just been cooking making coffee taking care of my plants and exercising so yeah that's like this is like a reminder that med students aren't just like robots that just memorize stuff we have likes we have hobbies and sometimes it's like something nerdy or sometimes it's liking plants so yeah why did i get so defensive that's fine um so yeah don't forget to like and subscribe hit the bell hit the comments hit the comments but yeah whatever follow me on instagram see you next time wear masks stay inside love you